Aloha everybody and welcome to part 2 of Mega Man Powered Up. So I'm still going to be going in weakness order, which means I'm going to be going for Gutsman next. Yes, Gutsman. I got it covered. Ready? Again, one thing that's going to throw off uh, people who are familiar with the original game is that the entire weakness structure has been completely shifted because of the two new robot masters, Time Man and Oil Man. They figured it would be better for Oil Man to be beaten by Fire Man, but then it sort of changes what Bomb Man's going to be weak to, because now Bomb Man can't be weak against Fire Man, he needs a new weakness. But Time wouldn't kill bombs, would it? Oil can't kill bombs, because fire kills oil, and so they rearranged everything, basically. Uh, the only two Robot Masters who retain their original weakness is Cut Man and Fire Man. Everybody else is completely new. So, in the original game, Bomb Man was Guts Man's weakness, and in the new update, powered up version, Guts Man is weak to Time Slow. Time Slow, the ability we got from Time Man, basically slows down everything but you. Uh, you run at a normal speed, but everything else, the enemies, you know, projectiles, the enemies movements, they're slower. You can only use it twice, and then you're out of energy, though. Is it a very useful weapon? Uh, it's not good for taking out bosses. I mean, it sort of slows down their attack, I guess, but I've never found it that particularly amazing. And, um... It, it only damages Gutsman. The Time Slow ability damages Gutsman, and that's about it. So, yeah. Again, the level design is completely different from what it was originally. This is not the Mega Man that you grew up with. The level design is different. The music is all remixed. The weaknesses are all different, and blah blah blah. Uh, but all of the basic ideas are still here. This still feels like it's an update to Mega Man 1. It's the same enemies, the same helicopter guys, the same Metal guys, the same Metal guys with shields who throw pickaxes at you. Like, the enemies are all the same. Some of them operate a little bit differently, but for the most part, it's Mega Man 1. Guts Man's level is still about, you know, platforms that fold out and then fold back in again. If you're standing on it when it folds out, you will fall to your bottomless pit and die. And that's never fun, ladies and gentlemen. Never fun at all. <laughs> Also different from the original game, the hallways leading to the boss don't have any enemies in them, because that was the unique thing about Mega Man 1, the original game. Every hallway had enemies before you got to the boss, so... Yeah. Hey, men only! Little boys don't belong here. Go home before you get hurt. Time to punch out and go home, Gutsman. You big idiot! What'll happen to me if I get fired? Ready! <laughs> I accidentally pushed the button and missed the rest of the dialogue, but whatever. <laughs> and don't worry, Guts Man, you'll never get fired. Dr. Wily loves you. You're his BFF, man. So as I said before, Time Slow is this guy's weakness. I don't know what I was doing during this run. For some reason, I thought I, it could hurt him when he was underground. Uh, it does not hurt him when he's underground. In, <laughs> in fact, it's just a waste of time flow. In fact, during this whole thing, this whole going underground and then surprising you thing, that only happens in hard mode. That's his special, special super attack that only happens in hard mode. It can be kind of annoying because you pretty much have to jump at the exact moment that you start hearing the ground coming out. And he can immediately throw his block right after he comes up, and if you have no room to avoid that, it can be easy to get hit uh, when he does this attack. It does mega damage, it only happens in hard mode, and it's a pain in the ass. You got me killed just here. Um, you can only activate Time Slow to damage Guts Man when he's out and not doing his special attack. Again, it only does it twice, it doesn't kill him in two hits, so, you know, Time Slow is still not the be-all, end-all ultimate attack that will kill Guts Man. When he ground pounds, uh, you get stunned if you're standing on the ground. But you have to be pretty damn exact with this shit. Just before he lands, you have to jump, because the ground pound does uh, stay for a while. It does stay for, like, maybe one or two seconds after he ground pounds. So you, you have to make sure your jump is pixel perfect, so that you jump right after he lands, so that you won't be in the middle of the uh, rumbling. 
Time Slow actually puts you at a disadvantage for that, because even though it damages Guts Man, the rumbling stays longer. So even if you jump at the exact pixel when you need to, you still get tripped up by the ground shaking because time is slowed down, and now there's more time to get shaken up by the rumbling, you know? It's weird. All the Robot Masters operate differently from what they did in the original game. <laughs> Guts Man got a new attack. He constantly burrows underground and, you know, either way, we defeat Gutsman, we can pick up stone blocks and throw them at enemies. Not the most useful ability in the world, I didn't think it was all that great in the original game, but hey, we got it. Nice job. Keep up the good work. So, Cutman is weak against Gutsman, just like he was in the original game, so we're going to be going for Cutman next. Finish this. I will try and show off the powers a little bit more than I usually do. Every time I do a Mega Man playthrough, I generally like to stick with the Mega Buster because the Mega Buster is pretty awesome. But uh, here is the Guts Man Super Arm in motion. You can only pick up blocks that have the rock symbol on them. You can't just pick up any random block. Uh, again, it shows in the top left corner when you have the power highlighted how many times you can actually do the power-up, which is really useful, and I wish more Mega Man games did that. Uh, the Anniversary Collection did that as well uh, for every game, but uh, Powered Up basically shows you a number seven. You use your ability, now it's six. You use your ability again, now it's five, and it's like, ah, cool. And then when you get weapon energy, it refills, and uh, yeah. Another thing that's different about Powered Up compared to the original classic games when you pick up weapon energy, uh, you just immediately refill whatever is lacking in power. Uh, you don't need an energy equalizer that generally every other Mega Man game had you buy at a shop or something. So that just happens automatically. You don't have to switch to the power that needs juice. Even if you're just regular Mega Buster Mega Man, it will refill all of your energy, which is fantastic. These guys move ridiculously faster in hard mode than they do in normal or easy mode, so uh, if you were playing in normal mode, these guys would be moving at a much slower pace. That's why everything's kind of sporadic and bounce, 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 bouncing off the walls again. Whoa, I'm looking like a fool again. Whoa, okay, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure you can hear the uh, kindergarten cut man music that I mentioned earlier. It's very cutesy, very kitty. Mega Man Powered Up's art style is very chibi. Everyone has big, you know, anime eyes, and everyone's all big bobblehead and everything. <laughs> but it works. I like the uh, art style. It's just nice to have something refreshing, you know, something different from the 8-bit the eight -bit sprite, which is, you know, iconic, and everyone knows the 8-bit sprites. I mean, we've all seen it, but uh, it's nice to have something different. That heart I passed is a free man. Usually in Mega Man games, a free man is shown as Mega Man's 8-bit head. Uh, not so much in this game. A heart is a free man. So if I picked it up, my lives counter would go from 2 to 3. Another thing I like about Powered Up, if you die at a level, or not if you die at a level, if you finish a level at 0 lives, and then you go into the next level, it, it, it automatically resets your life counter to 2. So you don't have to kill yourself in order to make sure you have more chances. Very considerate game, this powered up. B brother I can't believe it! Dr. Wily was right! You've changed into a bad robot! Cutman, what's going on? You're an evil fighting robot now! I'm gonna stop you, Mr. Mega Man, and make you good again! Cutting it up! Oh, Cutman, you're so dramatic. In the original game, Gutsman's super arm would kill Cutman in two hits. All you had to dip, do was throw two blocks at him, and he died. Not so much in this game. It only takes him out to kind of half health, but not really. <laughs> the powers aren't very good at taking out robot masters in this game. I don't know what to tell you. That boomerang attack is his special attack that he only does in hard mode. It always bounces along the wall and then comes back for you. So you do have to sort of jump forward, but then when it's coming back, move back from where it rode up the wall. It's the best way to dodge it. And occasionally he'll do three jumps, uh, and then he'll start throwing his cutter at you. And you always just want to sort of get close to him because he always jumps when he's close to you. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to cut, man. But uh, it's a very simple strategy that uh, 
makes him a robot master you could take on first. He's not complicated. He doesn't have any crazy, oh my god, how do you overcome this? He's cut, man. He's what he is. And by defeating him, we get the rolling cutter. I like that they have the weapon show-off screen, something that the original game didn't have. It's fantastic. Great job! Give it your all on the next stage too, Kay! So the next robot master is a luck man, right? No, the weaknesses is different. So we are now going after Bomb Man, not a Lek Man. <laughs> Bomb Man is usually the guy I started off with first in the original game. Not so much this one. Time for a big bang. Ready? Rolling Cutter is one of the best abilities outside of like the Thunder Beam and Firestorm and everything. Uh, mainly because it goes at an angle, so certain like turrets that are on ceilings or certain. Uh, spike platform things that move left and right on the ground that Mega Man's shooting just a little bit too high above. The rolling cutter could take care of those pretty nicely. I mean, it does move in a boomerang fashion, so sometimes you'll accidentally throw the rolling cutter above a guy rather than directly at him. But, uh, you know, if you played the original Mega Man, you know what the rolling cutter is like, and um, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but you do get a lot of rolling cutter. It's one of the more useful abilities in this game, as opposed to uh, the original, where the best one was uh, Thunder Beam. In this game, Thunder Beam doesn't have too much use now, because they've really shortened the ammo count of Thunder Beam. But I digress. Aw oh, man, you know, you just gotta watch out for the turrets, gotta watch out for all the little projectiles. Another difference about Powered Up in the original, you can't shoot through walls, but those turrets can't shoot through walls either. And when we take on old style mode, which is uh, the original level designs in this new gameplay style, you're going to see that uh, that's kind of actually disadvantageous for a lot of the enemies because usually in the original game, their pellets could shoot through walls too, and then they could hit you in certain ways. Not so much in this new update, but you know. Spikes are still instant kill, even in easy mode. Even in easy mode, if you, if you touch spikes, you die immediately, so you have to make sure that these spikes don't kill you, obviously. And yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> Commentary over. <laughs> Those blocks up there are Oil Man blocks. Oil Man has this unique ability to uh, sort of surf around. We'll see when we get to Oil Man, but you can use it to plow through those blocks. It's not very useful here, though. You don't really need it. I think it gets you, like, maybe a Construction Zone power-up or whatever, but uh, I'll probably show off Construction Zone in an extra video. I don't know how... I don't think I'm going to create my own level, and uh, we'll see what goes on with that. Powered Up has a lot of content. Between all the different missions that uh, you can do to unlock a certain character with a red visor and sunglasses. Eh? Eh? And uh, the old style, all the playable characters. This game is chock-filled with content. Good God, is it chock-filled with content. But now it's time to take on Bomb Man. Bombs! Uh-uh! Don't run off! Let's have a little fun with my explosives! Bomb Man, that's really dangerous! Stop setting off bombs! You should have come the day before yesterday! I had some big boom booms then! Don't cry now! Okay, so Bomb Man in hard mode is weak against Cut Man. He occasionally sends one bomb, but nah, he actually sends two bombs this time around. So you sort of want to be in the middle of those bombs. Uh, one special move he didn't get to pull off because the rolling cutter takes it out so quickly. <laughs> was occasionally he'll bring out a gigantic bomb. And there's two things this gigantic bomb can do. He can just throw it right where you are, so you gotta run out of the way. Or he'll make it bounce along the ground, so you gotta sort of run under it after it bounces, just so you can narrowly avoid it, you know? Uh, the rolling cutter can actually take out all of his bombs with one swipe, even the big bomb. So if you have rolling cutter, this is an easy fight. You really have nothing to worry about. So, uh... Yeah! Anyway guys, I'll see you in part 3 where we take on the next Robot Master. So till then, toodles.